All right, so this is how you put objects in a background, okay? Um, so this is a fresh scene. Well, let me delete these just to be clean. Okay, first thing to notice is, is uh, look at this, right? We see right here, this is the Z axis, right? So we see it's a blue um, and it's going in this direction, right? So Z is going away from us, right? And we see X is going to the right. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do first, right? We're gonna create a camera. So uh, click on the camera. We have a camera right here. And we're going to go to tags, tracker tags, and camera calibrator, right? After we click on this, we're going to go to image. And right here in our image, we're gonna click on this. And I gotta find the image. Um, I had, where is it? Ah, sorry, y'all. Ah, okay. So I have this one right here. I'm gonna do it with another image too, but I have this one right here, All right? So um, these right here are basically saying uh, you can um, have a full image, which, okay, I guess it is this full image. Sometimes there's match width and it can change like the dimensions and this right here. Um, I'm just going to keep it on custom. But if you go through and you click through, you can see how it kind of like tries to warp your image to fit uh, these aspects ratios. So standard, as we can see, uh, is looking like that HTV. So you can see how it's squishing it in certain areas. Um, some of them don't look as natural or, or aren't the natural resolution but you can also uh, manually, you know, control this as well. So just letting you know. Um, all right, me personally, I'm gonna do control C. I like to, well, I'm just gonna delete this and start over, right? So just wanted to show you that. Uh, so we go on the tags, tracker tags, camera calibrator, and I'm just gonna put the image back in that I had before. Um, Okay, so the image is in here. And of course we can uh, take down the brightness if we need to see something. All right, so we have our camera in here and now we're gonna go to uh, calibrate, right? Um, I'll show you two different ways to do this, but right now we're gonna do, to, do this one called um, add line. And what we're gonna do is we're trying to lay out or figure out where the grid is so that we can place our objects on in our 3D scene, like it's in the grid. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go to add line, right? And what happened is this line shows up, right? And so what we need to do is we need to line this to the X, Y, and Z axes. But we're just gonna do um, X, not Y, and Z. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this right here and I'm gonna place it in an area where I'm gonna actually gonna try to line it up with this. And if we see the little screen, it's kind of giving us a magnifying uh, glass thing here so we can see where we're going. So I'll take that one, put it there, and I'll take this one, put it here. Like I said, I'm gonna do this with a different image so it'll make a bit more sense. But this right here is supposed to align with the um, perspective of the image, all right? So I'm gonna do another one, add line. I'll take this one right here and let me put it in this corner. And then there's this one right here. And I'm assuming because this line right here is, is uh, in line with this, I can, I could actually like take it further if I wanted to, but for this, I'll just take it right here. But I think in other instances, if you can see the line, yeah, we'll just take it right here. Just because we see it follows along this. And I'll do another line. And with this one, I can, uh, I'll do this. I'll follow this shadow because this is also part of our perspective, right? So I'll take this and align this. Well, I guess I can do it here and then probably make more, a bit more easier. A bit more easier. I don't know if that's right, correct English. All right, so 
give this um do another line so for this one i will do since that's my z i'm gonna do my x so i'll just follow along the shadow just because it gives us good information on the perspective okay i'll do another line this one right here i'll align this with this grid back here and all I'm trying to do is give the computer as much information as I have, like w looking at the scene of where the perspective would be or, you know, along the ground. So are you like sectioning off like the perspective that you want with the lines? Um, I guess you could say that, yeah, because I'm all I'm trying to do is get as much information to say, okay, this is what it looks like in the Z axis and the X axis. You can do it on Y when we need to, but for this, we just need Z and X. Um, what usually happens is these things kind of uh, change when there's when the uh, when the uh, I'm just trying to say this. The be the better the information, the the um these things like turn green, right? So now it's saying unsolved. So it's saying like there's not enough information. So let me try to take it a little further. Okay. I'm not sure because usually these things light up, but let me see if this will work. Um, all right, so now I'm just going to click on create background object and create camera mapping tag. All right. Um, oh, no, I think I did. Ah, okay, there's one thing I didn't do. I'm sorry. Let me go back a step. So before I do that, so let me go backwards. What I need to do is I need to tell the computer where these lines are. So I hold down shift and I click, right? And remember, uh, Z was blue and X is red, right? So because X, I mean, X is red, and it's supposed to be along this axis. As you can see here, as it's going uh, horizontally, we need to click this. So every time we click, green is Y, Blue is Z, and then red is X. So because this is going this way, just like we set up our camera with the Z, we need to make sure that these are blue. So that one's blue holding down. I'm holding down shift and clicking too. This one's blue. If we add another one right here, okay. This one's blue. And this one right here, if I hold down shift, this one's red, hold down shift. This one's red. And we can see these things saying solved. And this is saying indirectly solved. I guess you want them to be all green, but you know, uh, I think as long as it gets to the point. So now that we have these points set up, now it's starting to be aligned, right? Now I click on create um, background object and create camera mapping tag. All right, and then now I'll get inside of my camera. So I just click this right here and it like aligned everything to this grid. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, so you can't really see. Oh. Okay, yeah, there it is. So if I click on for so show image, we can see how it aligned with the grid. Now the grid looks like it's higher up than this, but trust me, it's on the ground. So we want to make sure we don't jostle camera and mess up the view. So I'm going to right click on it, um, rigging tags, protection, right? So now I can't mess up my camera view. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is put a shape on this. So I'm going to click off of this. So as we can see, there's our uh, camera in our scene. So if I middle mouse button click and I go here, only thing is, I don't want to see the background in this image. Um, I'm not going to go through that because I'm not sure exactly the quickest way to turn that off. I don't want to investigate. 
So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cube right here. And if we go to our four way view, this is default camera. So what we want is, is we want to put this in front of this camera and I'm going to get back in my camera now. Okay, cool. The cube is there. All right. So now look, if I take this and I slide it, it kind of looks like it's there, but it's going to look even better with the lights and I'll show you. So I'm going to take this, drag it out. Right here. All right. Now I'm going to, I guess, give it a, a light. No, you know, let's just see what it looks like in the render real quick. So I'll press this. Okay, we see it's right there, right? But we um, aren't getting any shadows. It doesn't look like it's like, it looks like it's placed in there, but it doesn't look like it's really integrated. So what we need to do is let's make a, ourselves a ground plane. So I'll click on this, I'll get a plane, right? All right, cool, we have a plane. Now look at this, I'll take this plane. Ooh, messed up there. You saw that, right? I didn't grab it with the arrow. So I take this plane and I'll stretch this like this. And I'll put this here. All right. So now we have our plane here. Just look at it with the render. Still not looking good, right? So what we need to do is we need to take this background object that was made when we click background and the when the camera calibrator created the background object after everything was done. So we'll take this right here and we'll drag it to the plane. Some of that didn't feel right. I'll take this control click, drag it onto the plane. That's what it was because I need to uh, duplicate that texture. So now that's on the plane. Let's press render. Okay. It's not looking the best. But there's a fix to that. So first, I'm going to start. Um, oh, no, actually, this is what I need to do. If I don't want to see it, I'll click on this and I'll go to, what is it? Um, uh, render tags compositing. <clears throat> right. And then I click on compositing background. That's what it is. Now, if I press play, we don't see anything there, right? So what we need to do is put some lights in here. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to make an HDRI. So I'm going to double click right here, click on this, and I'll just make it, I'll make it say uh, HDRI just to keep things organized. Disable luminance, disable reflectance, enable, I mean, yeah, disable color, reflectance, luminance, three dots. Um, Downloads, let me find these cool HDRIs. Mm, Pond Bridge Night, let's see that. All right, so I'll now click on this, go to sky, take my HDRI, put it in the sky, double click on it, or, you know, double click on it. You could do that here too, and go to this, I'm just going to here, to 4K. Or I can do it here in this one. Wait, not this one. This one. Same window. Um, 4K. And yeah, I'm still in my camera. So now let's give it a render. OK, we're seeing everything. We're seeing part of the floor, but we're not really seeing anything. So we need to go to the sky and right click come where is it positing tag click on this and click off of scene by camera now we'll press play okay now what i need to do is go to my the best render and this you know there's a really good render called um redshift and I'm going to see if I can get that for you all. 
It's like super fast. Um, wait, physical, ambient, global. We'll do another one. Okay, now it's starting to come out, right? So just so we can see this a little bit better, I'm gonna take my cube and pull it up like this. And I'm gonna put it right here. All right, so now it's like sitting on the plane clearly. Okay, it looks like it's kinda in there, but let's uh, give it some nice shading. So I'll go to this, you know, Keep things organized. Um, peep this. I'm going to click on this, and I want it to be the color of these other things. So I'll just click on this color picker and see if I can get it a nice area. Um, I'm going to see what that looks like. I'll take this and put it on the cube, give it a render. Okay, it's starting to a little bit. So now I'll just double click on this. I will go to reflectance. I'll add a, let's see, a Beckman. So it gives it this reflecting thing. Now y'all know what this is, right? So layer is the, uh, is the color and then this reflectance is the second one. So if we uh, expose, wait, wait, am I doing that right? Yeah, the more we expose to this, the more reflectance we can see. So let's take it over here and let's give it some roughness. All right. And I'll take down some of the reflect, reflecting, reflectant strength and some of the specular strength. Uh, all right, give it another render. Not quite there, but getting there. Oh, and something else too. Uh, well, this probably has to do with the HDRI as well. Actually, let me try something. I'm gonna go here, go to luminance. I'm gonna choose a different one. So this is why it's good to have different HDRIs or look at different ones. Um, This, I was using the one the other day and it was like perfect. Yeah, let's try this. Cause that will make a difference. Ah, as you see, right? You, so you see this HDRI, same shader, just different HDRI, right? Gives a different result. It probably would uh, change too, is, is if we like rotate it or something, which I'll do just for the heck of it. So let me rotate this HDRI because I clicking on sky. We just can't see it in the viewport because I disabled the scene by camera. Let's just try another one just to do it. Okay, we're getting there a little bit. Now check this out. This is how you like really make your objects look like they're in the scene. I'm going to go click on this, get myself a PBR light and I'm gonna raise it up, right? And we clearly see this is like a shape of a cube, you know, um, it's like this but I want something called an omni light. So that means multiple directions or all directions, kind of like a candle or a light bulb. So I'll click on this. And I guess I could have clicked on like the light bulb light, but I'll just click on this and I'll go to omni. All right, and then I'll go to details. Instead of rectangle, I'll make it a sphere, all right? And what I'll do is I'll place this like right here. All right, so now I'll give it a render and my cube sort of has a light on it. You know, it's looking a little bit too shiny for me. So you go to reflectance and roughness. So. 
and then color and make it a little darker, see what happens. So what I'm trying to do is try to match it to this. Anyway, um, so with this light right here, I'll take it and I'll kind of do something similar. I'll double click on it or click on it. And I'll go to general, go to this, and I'll just pick a color from this thing right here. Just trying to get that light. So all I'm trying to do is, is make this look like it's integrated into the scene. That could be too much, so let's take it down. So all it is is like constantly testing to get these settings right. Once you get that lighting right, you can put anything in here. What about like temperature? Yeah, I could use temperature. Uh, I'm just trying to get it, I guess, as close as I can with that, but I could definitely use temperature. That's probably what I would usually use, actually. This. So I'm just trying to get these properties just right. Because it's going to be a lot of roughness. Not so much. Oh, okay. Kind of getting there. Getting close, very close. But I should give myself some filet. Yeah, look at that, right? So yeah, this is how you do it. So I'm just gonna bring a little bit more orange in here. Oh, come on. That's getting close. I don't think y'all could tell that wasn't in there. Or maybe I'm just being arrogant. No, no. But I think it looks like it's definitely like just a few small tweaks away from being perfect. Yeah. So all you're doing is really just trying to put something in there and you uh, give the lights and yeah, we have this type of interaction. Now the one I was gonna do, um, I, there's another one with another photo I did and um, it's actually behind Howard. I completely forgot. It's on my other computer. I just got to put it on a drive. But um, that'll be a quicker, you know, way quicker lesson than this. But yeah, this is exactly what I see. And um, I think I'll have to start one other Zoom. Don't worry, I'll make it short. But um, I'll have the... And I'll have a, um, what I want to sign it now, wise. It was on another computer. I just got to like put on a flash drive and I can show you all. But um, yeah, this is basically the technique to um, put this in here and have uh, lights. Because right now, if I go in and I get myself a sphere or... Let me push this. Or anything else, uh, it's horse. Whatever's on this grid now should look integrated. 
uh, depending on how this looks. Can I scale this? Uh, well, I guess I could scale it. I'm not sure what that's going to look like. Or I could duplicate that light. But everything we put in, oh, they just don't have that shader. Should fit in there like it is in there. And then you can take it to like a whole nother level, which would be to build out it just depends and this is what i was going to show you on uh this next quick video because you can build out geometry in your scene that resembles like i'm not going to build this thing out with all these cuts and everything because i don't know exactly what it looks like but um you can build out geometry to make um to make the shadows also interact. So this can be something that uh, cast shadows on the other uh, objects, since this is already here, you know what I'm saying? So to do that would be to take that and actually just put the background tag on it. So if I control click, so let me say building And then we have to do the compositing, click on it, composite background. And if I had the light set up right, you get what I'm saying, behind this, then that could cast a shadow. It's leaving like a little edge just because it's like badly placed. But if it was, if I had geometry basically that looked like this, then it could fit there. But we're gonna do that, but with simpler geometry. So I'm gonna send out another Zoom meeting. Don't worry, it's gonna be a quick one and it's gonna explain, uh, the uh, assignment, what I'm looking for. So I'm going to send that out and we'll be back. We still have a minute and a half. So I'll just talk while I do that. Um, yeah, is this making sense to everybody? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. 